that time again for a one take tutorial. My heart is raising as usual. If you are not familiar with one take tutorials, um, they are basically unedited videos where I do a makeup tutorial in one take and I talk about some kind of theme. So I pick a theme for the video and I create a look around that theme, but I also talk about something um, related to my life or something I'm going through or I have been through related to that theme. So this is my first one take tutorial of 2020. Hello, excited to be here. Also nervous. I'm wearing my winky face sweatshirt, which you can't fully see, but I got this in Paris um, uh, last year, I guess it would be now, and I really love it. So figured I'd wear it today. I also have my podcast club bracelet on today, but that is besides the point because, oh, I didn't start the timer. Here we go. <laughs> I have to have a timer. Otherwise, I'll just keep talking forever. So today's theme is reflection um, since my word of 2019 was reflection. So I am going to be reflecting on the last year, I thought it would be appropriate since it is the beginning of 2020. And I'm just going to reflect on things that have happened in the last year. So I guess if I were to take the, you know, theme of reflection and think of one word that really represented the year aside from reflection, it would definitely be change or expansion like one of those words but maybe i'll pick both i'm going with two words you know one thing that hasn't changed though nars eye primer that's what we're starting with so i'm gonna put this on my eyes uh oh also about the one take tutorials i don't make promises about how the look is going to end up at the end because i enter and don't really have any plans for the direction that i'm going in and so I'm just gonna not make any promises about the outcome here, which I feel like is a good life lesson, you know? Um, that is definitely actually one of the, I think, big lessons for me this year. So, you know, I think a big change for me in the last year has been getting in touch with my creativity in a new and more expanded way and it has been really really hard and scary so I um, am in a book club and I feel like that was kind of the catalyst for this Ooh, so this is a theme of change I'm using sparkly stuff on my eyes and I'm kind of into it Okay, um, I feel like that's also a theme of the last year, like trying something different and then being kind of into it. So I'm in a book club and I feel like that has really helped me just get in touch with my creativity in a new and different way. And one of the big, I think, just... I guess, clarity moments that I had around my creativity and my professional work is that the internet is a tool that I use to share my work, but it's not where my creative work is actually done. So I'm using it as a space to release my work and put it out into the world, but I'm not doing my work on the internet the creative work is all done offline. And that was a huge revelation for me because especially in the last few years, I've just been really down in terms of like my, like my career and just my feelings around it. I've felt really discouraged with like the change in algorithms on different platforms. And I was definitely in this space of, okay, what can I do to make the algorithms like me? What can I do to make people like me more? What can I do that like other people are going to like watching or looking at or whatever it was? <laughs> I don't know. 
I think it might have been a radiator. Hopefully that's the case. Um, and so I really was just kind of wrapped up in this feeling of, I would say desperation. Like I need to be doing things that are gonna make other people happy, that are gonna make these algorithms like me. And it really got me away from the things that I wanted to be making and my feelings about myself. It was all just kind of this distraction and I have glitter everywhere. I don't know about this choice, but I'm gonna work with it. Um, so yeah, it has just been really, really hard. And I think this last year, especially, I decided to drop that weight and just put it down. And I was like, I am not going to do this anymore. I am not going to just deplete myself by spending all of my energy thinking about what other people want from me, what these algorithms who aren't even people want from me. And I'm gonna figure out where I am and what I want and where my creativity and my instincts are telling me to go. And that was a really, really big deal because, you know, it felt really just, oh God, I have glitter all over my face. No, th that's not part of the look. I do know that much. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I lost my train of thought. I felt just really depleted. And um, I think that having this shift and realizing that the internet is where I... Um, share my work but it's not where the work is like being done was just a huge wake-up call for me and it allowed me to just feel less guilty and less afraid of stepping away from the internet for more extended periods of time to like do the work um, and that means like self-work digging into like past traumas that were coming up for me in a new way. That was like a huge thing this year. I was just feeling really triggered just for a significant amount of the year. Okay, I'm getting rid of that makeup wipe because it's just covered in glitter. We're, we're going to the next year. I need a clean slate. Um, and, you know, for the last few years, I would just wake up regularly with anxiety. And the first thing I would be thinking about was like how I was performing on Instagram and YouTube. And I was like, okay, I know that this is a part of my job, but it shouldn't feel all consuming like this. What else is going on with me? And I ultimately found that I not only needed to sink into what was going on with me on like a just like personal level with these like past traumas and new feelings around them coming up, but I had to also get in touch with my creativity. And it was hard because I didn't really know where to start. And I'm so grateful because the artist way just really helped me and it kind of landed on my doorstep in just a really unexpected way. It wasn't something that I was like planning to do. Um, I just kind of ended up in this group by saying yes on a whim and it was a transformative experience for me. And now I've kind of taken the reins myself with this like guidance and encouragement that I've received from reading The Artist's Way and I've realized that, you know, I think when I did the podcast episode with Erica around her sobriety, it really made me think about, okay, Erica's number one priority in her life is her sobriety. But when I thought about that for myself, I was like, I don't know what my answer is. What is the number one most important thing to me? And I thought about it. And I kept landing on my creativity. Like, I just think 
that that is really the big change that has happened for me that has been the catalyst for all the other change and expansion in my life that has happened this year getting back in touch in a deeper way i think that i've been in touch with my creativity like for an extended period of time i'm always making things whether it's like on the internet or just in my life but this was like in a new and like deeper and more spiritual way where i really just felt myself go from this like flailing place and spiraling and anxiety to a place of okay i think i'm starting to find my grounding here and that has felt really good and it doesn't mean that like all my anxiety has just like disappeared and i have no fear or anything but i have tools and just things that i can do that help diminish that um those feelings of anxiety and worry and i think i've just also come to understand that i'm in the midst of a transition and a change and I think that some of you guys can see that because I definitely see it in the comments like you guys have noticed that there's just been a change in the last 10 years and I feel like I've gone through a huge change just in this last year like so many of my habits have changed I am talking about money in a way that I never have before Ooh, what am I doing no I need a uh, <laughs> need this first um i'm talking about money in a way that i never did before which i feel like was also you know connected to my creativity and getting that sense of expansion and that deeper sense of liberation because i feel like for so long like for as long as i can remember i've just been told to not talk about money with other people and i'm starting to realize now how trapped that has made me feel and really isolated and also just you know not like coming to terms with my financial story and like pushing that away and not really knowing what it is or acknowledging it and how that ties into my larger story and this year that was a huge thing that i did um I talked about it on the One Step podcast. I talked about it on Chelsea's podcast, The Financial Confessions. And, you know, I've been having these conversations with people um, on a regular basis in real life. And I'm having these meaningful money conversations in the moments that matter with the people that matter, which like just wasn't happening before and it feels really powerful to be owning that story because i see it as something similar to coming out and i always say that coming out for me was like a stepping stone into deeper self-exploration but when i came to terms about that part of my identity um i just felt like a more expanded version of myself and it gave me the courage to start exploring other parts of myself and i totally feel this with um the money story and the financial story like i just feel myself expanding and stepping into this power that has always been there but i'm tapping into it and i have this deeper sense of who I am because I've chosen to acknowledge that story and not run away from it, look at it and accept it for what it is. Um, learn from the mistakes that I have made and um, you know, learn from the things that I've done that I have really loved um, or I'm really proud of. And um, just looking at it as a whole experience and not trying to just take what's comfortable or take like what is good but really looking at all of it so you know that has been so huge for me and what's been really cool is to see other people 
who I know opening up about their stories because I've chosen to like have that conversation or talk about it myself. Um, that has been really, really special. Um, and you know, just in terms of like my creative work, I've just tried so many new things this year that I've just never done before. These one take tutorials are definitely a result of me getting in touch with my creativity. I've taken risks this year. I've listened to my instincts. I started a new podcast, which I've been thinking about for a long time and I launched it in the way that I wanted to launch it, um, which was, you know, on my own, self-funded, um, and really focused on the content and building a community. And that has been so incredibly cool to just like watch that, um, like creative force just come to life. It really is its own entity that it is, you know, has its own life and its own movement. And I feel like, you know, it came from an idea that I had, but now it's really cool to just see it out in the world and to listen to the cues inside of me to help guide it along and it has been so fulfilling. I didn't realize how much creative energy was just stifled up inside of me until the end of this year. And I keep telling everyone in my life, it has literally felt like I've just been stewing in dirty bath water. Like imagine just being in a bathtub with cold, like brown water. Like that's what I've been stewing in for years. <laughs> and this year I pulled the drain plug and it all went down the drain and I rinsed myself clean with clean, fresh water. And that is what this year feels like for me. It just feels like I have gone through so many changes and I, a lot of them have been really hard and difficult. And there have been moments where I have just been crying and so afraid of like what's going to happen um, and unsure if you know my instincts are correct and full of self-doubt and now I'm in a place where I'm like I'm so glad that I listened to my instincts this year because they will always guide me home and that was a realization I had on a walk recently I went on this like maybe two hour walk with Tato. And I had this realization because I went out and I didn't have my phone and I had no idea like where I was within the park. I just like, the only thing that I told myself going on this walk was I am going to take only paths I've never taken before. And so I only walked on paths that I had never been on. And so I didn't know where I was within the park and I couldn't look on a phone to find out but I followed my instincts like where I was just feeling like I needed to go. And as I was walking out of the park and um, I got to the street and realized where I was, I was like, oh my gosh, my instincts led me here. No matter what, my instincts will always lead me home. And that just felt like not just relevant to that walk experience, but it really felt like um, a larger personal revelation that I was having about this last year and just, you know, moving forward. I think that's something that I'm definitely going to be thinking about moving into this next year. Um, let me think for a second about where I'm going with this. Uh, what do I want to do? Well, since it's all about change, let's use some blue eyeliner. Why not? You know, I already have glitter on my eyes. So here we go. Um, whoa, almost stabbed my eye. Okay. I don't really 
do this with eyeliner that much anymore, so it feels very weird. It feels very foreign. Um, but, you know, what's been interesting is that, like, allowing myself this creative space where also I have been, like, writing almost every single day for the last year, which is just, like, such a huge creative shift in general. I have just felt more confident when I do decide to share things on the internet. I know why I'm there or if I'm, you know, just looking at what other people are posting, I'm just really intentional about like why I'm there, what I'm looking at. I know the deeper whys and it feels fun again. Like it just feels like a different experience. Um, it doesn't feel like this like daunting place where I have to be pleasing everyone because the thing that I am focused on is, okay, how am I gonna be pleasing that creative spirit inside of me? And I have to say that these one take tutorials have been like, some of the best creative release for me and I just I really didn't see that coming this was an idea that just kind of came to me in little bits and pieces over the course of like a week um and that was really cool like the way that I just thought of this idea I was at an event and I heard people, other YouTubers um, who have also been on the platform for a long time, they were talking about, you know, they had done something in one take and I was like, oh, that's so interesting. I wonder what it would look like for me if I did something in one take, like what would that be like? And then I was just kind of like thinking about it, not actually thinking, okay, I'm for real gonna turn this into something. And then shortly after that, then I was like, oh, well, what if it was around makeup? Have I ever done something like totally in one take with makeup and like not edited? And then um, what really like solidified it for me was actually getting requests from people online when I had asked like, what kind of tutorial would you like to see? instead of leaving a request for like a specific kind of look, like sparkly eye look with blue eyeliner, somebody left like a general theme and I loved that. And I was like, this is it. This was the missing piece. Um, and it really solidified and crystallized the entire idea. And it just felt so cool. And I was like, this is what creativity is. Like, this is what it feels like to be paying attention to those signs that are always out there in the world. And then putting that puzzle together. And that is what feels so enriching and exciting to me. And I, you know, the last thing I think I, well, I don't know if this is the last thing, who knows, it's a one day tutorial. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that like a big lesson for me was um, outcomes and not worrying so much about what the outcomes would be especially this year, and I think that is so true. I feel like a huge lesson for me this year has been, um, you know, focus what I can do, focus on what I can do right now, but I'm not in control of what the outcome is. And so like I'm in control of making this video and doing what I'm doing right now, but I'm not in control of what happens when it goes out into the world. And I feel like that's a lesson that has permeated every single aspect of my life this year. Just letting go of the control that I have felt I needed to have around outcomes. And it has been so incredibly terrifying, um, especially as I've said this for years, as a, re a perfectionist in recovery, um, that is really, really hard to do 
but as I practiced it, practiced it more, starting in like small ways, I've realized, oh my gosh, it's actually such a huge relief. Like that's not my job. My job is not the outcome. My job is the work. And you know, with creativity, it's the creative work. That is my job. So yeah, in a lot of ways I've just felt relief and I think having that relief has you know, led to less anxiety and less anxiety has meant that I'm able to hear my inner voice more and listen to my instincts more. I've been getting outside. I've done things I just have never done before. I've like met so many new people. I've put myself out there and I've made new friends in New York City, which I wanted, but I didn't know if it would actually happen. And I just look at who I was one year ago, like about to turn 30 and who I am now, 30, about to turn 31. And I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> are we the same person? I know we are. I know that there's so much that like I love about um, a year ago, Ingrid, but Oh my God, you know the thing that I am most grateful for about a year ago, Ingrid, is that she had the courage to take all of these steps this year. And that has led me to this place where, what the heck, not again. <laughs> that has led me to this place where I feel just a sense of expansion and I feel so much more in touch with who I am and a part of myself that I just feel like was kind of tucked away and like silenced for a while. And I'm breathing new life into her and it's a process and it's not like there's an end point um, and then I'll be done, but it feels like this, just expansion, expansion and transformation and huge, huge change. And a year ago, Ingrid did not know that a year from now, she would be sitting here with glitter all over her eyes, blue eyeliner on, just so grateful for all of the steps that she took in this last year. All of the moments where she was so scared and so unsure of what would happen but having faith in her instincts and her abilities um has been like looking back on it i'm just like wow thank you past ingrid thank you thank you thank you and i just feel like she has put me on this path that i'm on now and i'm so incredibly grateful for that and as I put on this lip gloss, you know, let's go for something a little brighter. Why stick to the rule of if you have glittery eyes, you need a neutral lip? Is that a rule? I feel like it might be. Let's do something a little bit more fun, shall we? I don't want like super bright, but I, I want something. So let's use this. Um. As I look down and I'm like putting on my lip color, I see the bracelet from the podcast club and it says brilliant on it. We had a podcast club meeting where we each made truth bracelets and mine says brilliant on it. You know, I'm just gonna go for the color, whatever. Wiping it off. Um, I went for brilliant because I feel like that was something that I just never felt like I could associate with myself. I would just tell myself that I was stupid and that my ideas were not good enough and that I didn't have anything. And through this bracelet, I like reminded myself 
oh no, I am brilliant and I have good ideas and I am creative. And that was like just always my biggest thing is am I like creative enough? And this to me just like represents so many different facets of myself but I think for so long I let other people tell me that I was stupid um and I internalized that myself and I started telling myself that I was stupid and I'm not I am brilliant and I have good ideas and I'm just so proud of myself for this last year because I just really really feel it and it's hard for me to say this like to say I'm proud of myself because I feel like we're told not to say those things about ourselves but that's the truth that's what it is for me this year um and it feels like a big deal and yes I'm gonna beauty blend the coming tears away I guess that is a theme of these one day tutorials I don't plan it <laughs> can't I don't know, it just happens. So yeah, that was 2019. I don't know what the outcome of 2020 is going to be, but 2019 Ingrid has put me on this path and I have so much faith in her because we have come so far together and I'm open to what's to come in 2020 but I do know one thing for sure I am going to celebrate in 2020 that is going to be my word for this next year so that is gonna be it for today um, you know all of the end things I just can't do the end things when I'm like sniffly and full of tears <laughs> um, I think this look is really fun um, it really feels like change for me um, and I hope that you guys are having, you know, an intentional start to your 2020. I hope that you give yourself a pat on the back for the last year because no matter what your last year has been like, we have all made steps, even just really, really tiny steps. And you deserve to be proud of yourself for that. So I will see you guys next time. Bye, everyone.